Hello, hello everyone. We're gonna paint a pumpkin tonight. A little bit different than what it did look like. Now I showed you some pictures of it. I posted some pictures of what it was before. It was kind of a, I guess a Texas A&M pumpkin that I had gotten from someone else and a bunch of stuff that I had bought from her. Um, I didn't need a Texas A&M, so I apologize for all you Texas A&M fans, but we're gonna do it a little bit different tonight. I am Pam Savage with Young at Heart Creations. Welcome to my craft room, my craft time. Uh, this is my little sanctuary away from everything. And I love to paint and love to paint with you. So say hello when you come on. I'm gonna get you pulled up over here so I, on my iPad so I can see your comments when you come on. Maybe. There we go. You never know if it's going to work or not. All right, Nancy's here. Yay, Nancy. Hello, hello. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I went ahead and painted the back of it just a solid kind of a, a reddish brown color, fall color. And um, that's the side that all of the maroon and white design was on. And so I painted just base coated in a buttermilk color. Uh, tonight so um, got a couple of different ways I was thinking about doing it and even as I was coming in here I'm thinking I want to do that no I think I'm gonna do that so we're just gonna see what happens tonight <laughs> so thank you thank you for hopping on with me um, I'm going to try to do this I don't know if it'll be a quick one it's not gonna be a quick one tonight so promise promise that it's not gonna be a quick one but I'll try to do it in my normal time which is usually around an hour and a half to two hours Maybe it'll go faster. I don't know. Hi, Nene. So, instead of our typical orange uh, fall colors, I'm going to base coat it in this spa blue. I love that. It's one of my favorite, favorite colors. Deco Art uh, Spa Blue. I love, love, love it. And then we're going to do um, <clears throat> a few more things to it. On the stem, I've got a couple of different ways that we can do the stem. We can do it in this pretty, it's um, eucalyptus. I didn't think I could pronounce that. Eucalyptus green. We could do it in that. Now, again, the, the uh, base is going to be spa blue. Or we can paint it brown. Or I can give it a stained look so that the grain will show through and it'll look like a stick. It'll, it'll show all that through. Hi, Pam. Thank you, hi, Miss Linda. Thank y'all so much for hopping on. Got so much to talk about tonight, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna bring you down. See how that looks. I understand that Facebook was having some problems with sound. It was not our phones. A lot of us thought it was our phones or devices that we were using to record with, well, it was not. It was uh, something Facebook was having problems with. So hopefully they got that fixed. I hope so. <coughs> Allergies have been really fun this week for me. All right, let's see. I need to back you up a little bit. I think I think we'll be okay. Y'all let me know if this, if this is not uh, working for you let's go ahead and get started and then if it's not you can let me know and i can try to to back it up just a little bit and i like for you to be close enough that you can kind of see what's going on I'll add a little more light there okay so i'm just going to get some spa blue and i'm going to use my um I always forget one and a half inch flat that I get from Walmart. They come two to a package. I love, love, love them for base coating. So we'll just get it. I'm sure it's going to take a couple of coats on there, but isn't that just gorgeous if you didn't do anything with it? It's just such a pretty color. So pretty. And again, this was in. Um, I purchased a whole lot of things, just kind of a stockpile of things from a friend. And um, and it already had some stuff on the edges, so I'm gonna have to go back over the edges with black anyway, so I'm not being too, too crazy careful. Isn't that pretty? It even looks pretty with that yellow. 
looks really pretty that way. I'm going to move my light over a little bit. It's causing a shadow. Bear with me just a minute. We'll see if that helps a little bit. There was just a really dark spot there. So I'm just kind of dipping both sides and just quickly getting a coat on here. This is, looks like, feels like it's, um, it is, it's the Revolution plywood. Now, you guys be commenting on how you want me to do the stem. If you want me to do it in um, this eucalyptus soft green or give it a stained look so that it looks like a stick. It looks like a kind of a, like a bark. A little more realistic, I guess. I don't know that I've ever seen a real spa blue um, pumpkin but in my world there are spa blue pumpkins so we're gonna go with it I'm gonna get that paint off just in case we do stain so I'm gonna let y'all choose whichever one you choose the green or the um, just kind of a stain clear look on it adding just a little bit of water paint's gotten a little bit thick I think I sort of said this is the first pumpkin I've painted this season but I did I did the um, trios the pumpkin trios and then put the snowman on the back so this I guess is my second pumpkin Hi, Heather. Heather says stain. Hi, Peggy. Nene says stain. Yes, I'm painting a pumpkin, Linda. I'm redoing a pumpkin. You'll have to look on my Facebook page. Um, I posted a picture of it, what it looked like beforehand. It was maroon, burgundy, or maroon and white. Kind of, um, I have an idea that it was probably a um, Texas A&M pumpkin was going to be. I purchased it from a friend that um, I got several other things from. This was just in the the pile of things that I had gotten from her. It already has holes drilled in it. I typically don't use uh, drilled holes. So I may go ahead and do wire through it or I may put buttons over those holes and just do it the way I, I normally do it. I love these colors, um, this yellow and blue together, it's pretty. Now I'm kind of going off the edges, like away from the edges, so I'm not getting it out all over the edges because I'm so used to doing that, but I've got to repaint the edges anyway, so it won't matter that much. Okay, let's dry this and put a second coat on there. But look how that already changed it. The board is a little bit bowed, um, I guess the way she had it stored. So after it's completely done, I will uh, set something heavy on it overnight and then it should be fine. Should be fine. Thank you, Heather, that's spa blue, I love it. Hi, Tammy. Is it Tammy or, oh, it's Tim and Tammy. Okay, so I'm assuming you're Tammy. Hi, Laura. Okay, so far everybody's saying stain, so we'll do the stain look on it. We got rain today. It's been, I think, 70, 70 something days since we had had rain. And we got a very nice rain today, and we're supposed to have even more. I'm so excited. I was so thankful when I woke up and heard that rain coming down so nice we have been just desperately needing it <clears throat> our 
everybody's yard brown and house is settling. Some doors won't shut or open. Okay. Again, I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to thin it out a little. And we'll put a second coat on. And I think I have in mind what I'm going to what else we're going to do to it, but we'll see. I'm going to post tomorrow um, this door hanger behind me for a school teacher. I had several of those orders. That one in particular, the school had spelled the name wrong on it uh, had, for the teacher on everything. So the order, when she gave me the order, um, she gave me the spelling just like the school had given it to her, but that was the wrong spelling of the name. So I'd already glued all the blocks on there. So I had to get a little creative and figure out how to uh, fix it. So I took pictures of kind of the steps that I took to correct it. Because those block letters, I had glued them on with that... Um, stick fast glue you know once you glue those on glue them with that and they're not going anywhere so i didn't want to take it off the only other option was to do a whole new piece so i was trying to avoid that if we could oh isn't that color so pretty So, so many ways that we can do pumpkins now. So many colors, shiplap, antique, traditional, buffalo plaid. I mean, there's just so many ways, cloth, material. I've got to get busy and cut some more pumpkins. I haven't. This is the last one I've got. I don't have any more pumpkins to um, to paint. And I've already got some orders for some for teacher's doors. So I've got to get busy and get some more cut. I do have some just simple rounds. Um, some, I think, I think they're 14 inch rounds that I could do. Do some on. All right, I'm gonna dry it, and then I'm gonna do one more coat with just the paint that I've got out here, just to be sure. Hi, Dana. I saw that you sprinkled earlier, Peggy. Thank you so much. Your sprinkle button's gone on this live. I have trouble sprinkling it when we're live. I have to wait till uh, it posts on everybody else's. And then I can sprinkle it. Oh, Laura, I'm glad y'all got some rain, too. Uh, that's Deco Art Spa, S-P-A, like you go to a spa. S-P-A, Spa Blue. It's definitely one of my go-tos. I use it a lot. In fact, my bedroom and uh, bathroom are painted in similar color, a little bit lighter. Okay, I think that's dry enough. I just see a couple of little spots that need a little bit more on it. And then we'll do some shading, some floating. Okay, I think most of you have seen by now my um, post about my live sale next Friday. 
not tomorrow, ne the next Friday, 26th. It'll be my first live sale. Most of it will be, um, get a little bit more paint, will be my spring items that I had left over, like I'd done, you know, duplicates or several of them, and I had some left over, or did them after spring and didn't take them anywhere. Um, so I will have those really marked down. I will have a few, not many, but a few uh, Christmas items in there, and um, but the spring items will be very, very marked down compared to what I typically sell them for. So you'll get a bargain. I've already had several comments that yes, we're we're coming. Now it's it's not an in person; it's online, online live sale. It'll be at six thirty on the twenty sixth. It'll be my first one, so y'all have to be patient with me. My hubby's going to help me. Um, he's going to watch the computer to see who comments first. The way it works is um, I will show an item and it'll have a number. They won't be in order. So it'll be um, number wise will be out of order. Um, and the first one that comes across on our monitor, on our computer, saying sold, number, whatever the number is, that will be the person that gets it. And you'll have until midnight that night for your payment to come through. Um, I will invoice everybody. Actually, I need to rethink that. because it will take me a little time to get it. We'll probably say noon that Saturday to pay after I invoice you. That'll give you about 12 hours. Okay, so there's our base coat of that. And then if I don't receive a reply from your once you uh, invoice you after, uh, till noon, whatever time, I'll have to figure out what time to set that off. Then it will go to the next person that commented. There'll be a $12 shipping fee and then um, tax uh, will also be added to the price of it. All right, I'm going to try this color and see. This is... Um, this is Anita's Robin Eggs, Robin's Egg Blue. Let's see if it's dark enough. It may not be dark enough. We'll have to try it here and see. Now you can use blending gel, floating medium with this. I'm kind of lazy and I just get it a little bit damp. You don't want it super wet. Just enough to where it'll glide across. So I've still got my uh, paint. I did not wash my brush. And I'm going to get that uh, Robin's Egg Blue on. And let's see if we like that. If I don't, then I'll go to a little bit darker turquoise. Way too much water in my brush. Let's see if I'm going to like that. Okay, let me dry it and look at it just a second here. Um, I do kind of like it. It's real soft. All right, we're going to go with it. And I'm just using that same brush, which is really kind of large, but I may need to go down a size. I think I will. Let's go down a size here. Let's go to a half inch. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm just getting that base coat on and then just right on the corner, picking up some of that Robin's Egg Blue. Okay, very hard to see. Let's see if we like this better. Okay, there's that color. You can barely, barely see it. I'm going to quickly put some of this Laguna on it and see what y'all like best. All right, let's do some Laguna up here. If we don't like it, we can paint over it. Okay, and then there's the Laguna. I know which one I like best. Comment real quick and tell me which one you like. Hi, Marie. I am doing well. You love the spa blue, Nancy? And Linda? You have to go to your daddy's that day. Thank you, Laura. Stick fast on a door hanger I made for next daughter-in-law. My grandsons were here um, a few weeks ago and said the gnome I had glued had fallen off. Oh, that surprises me. Laguna. I agree. That's my favorite. <laughs> I like the Laguna. It just shows up more. This other one is uh, just not quite what we need. All right, let me get the color off there. Let's get a little more Lagoon and the base color on there. Robin's egg blue is very pretty though. It's a it's a really pretty, very pretty blue. And I'll probably stick it in there two or three times in the wrong spot. Blending it back. Got a little bit of moisture on that, and I'm just blending it out. Soften that up just a little. You want to make sure you get your blending color, your shading color, on the same corner each time.
These are really pretty together. Let's get a little bit of moisture on that. Just taking a damp brush. This is going to, most of this down here is going to be covered up anyway. After we put our details on. So has anyone else on here had a live sale before? Give me any tips since this is my first one. Now I will say some things got scheduled that I was not anticipating. Um, but I think everything's going to work out fine. I don't think I'll have to change the date. As far as I know, I can keep it the same. But I'm going to have a um, little heart procedure. Not exactly on the heart. They're going to be uh, the Thursday before that. They are going to implant a, it's called an IRL, a loop recorder device. It's not a pacemaker, but it's just a recording device to monitor your heart. Some of you may have um, worn one outside of your body that you just strap on. I've done that, but they said it was not conclusive. So they need to go one step further and um, it's about the size of a stick of gum, but only thicker. So luckily, a lady at church just had the same procedure done in the last uh, couple of weeks, and she was able to kind of fill me in on it. They don't even put you to sleep. They just numb you, and they do a little incision right here. It's about, about like this, and then they just implant it. I'm for sure not looking forward to it and don't want it, but you got to do what you got to do. So, but I'm not anticipating any after effects or anything from it. So, um, I am still planning on doing the live sale. Okay, can y'all see how bowed this is? I don't know if you can tell by camera, but I will definitely have to sit something on it. Okay, let's do... Our little lines here. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I'm just going to smooth out. Go ahead and do the next one. Okay, we'll go that way. Kind of straight up and down. Let me figure out how I want to do this. So we'll go straight up and down with that one. Okay, I think we'll go straight up and down with this one in the middle. And this is where this, especially on a large piece like this, having a little bit of moisture on it 
It really helps it to flow. Just blending it out. All right, we've got one more here. Just getting some of that base coat color on so it'll blend in. See how I'm just putting it on the corner. Okay, now this one's gonna go out this way. So I'm gonna turn my pumpkin a little bit so it feels right for me to go this way. Okay, a little more moisture. practice in this is learning how much moisture to get and how much is too much and, you know and I still get too much sometimes but you don't want that broken edge you want it really soft Okay, I'm going to walk this out just a little further. Okay, so we've got our sections now. I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to cover that up. Okay, so we've got our sections shaded off. Let's go ahead and do the stem next. And so for the stem, I'm going to take um, burnt umber. <clears throat> See if I've got a little cup over here so I don't get it all over my plate. I'm just going to use this little cup. You can use an egg carton or, um, you know, I could just do it on the plate, but I just don't want to, it'll run all over the plate. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is put just a little bit in here because it's not going to take much. Probably could have even put less than that. And then I'm gonna drip some water in it. Just from my paint water. Gonna stir it up. Got an old paintbrush here and I'm just gonna stir it up with that. And I want it just ink consistency. Whoops, I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. I just dropped it. I didn't put an apron on, so I will probably get paint on this shirt before we're done. Okay, that's gotten underneath that plastic that I have. I have. Uh, the seal, it's called press and seal on here, so it got under that a little bit. Okay, so I've got it kind of ink consistency, and I'm just going to take one of my brushes, and I'm going to, it's very watered down. right up to where the pumpkin meets it. I 
Okay, so everything's covered. And now with a baby wipe, I'm gonna wipe it off. And you could do a darker or lighter, but there's what we've got. Look how pretty that is. It looks like you got some expensive stain, and we didn't. We did not. Okay, and I'll clean that up later. But you could do a whole board that way. Okay, so my thoughts for this. I think I'm going to do some vines and some flowers. Let's see where my good liner brush is. I've got to get my, um, I still have not unpacked my good brush, my good paint brushes. All right, here's my good liner. It's a 30 zero and it's master's touch liner very long love 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 it i'm still kind of learning how to use it okay let's go with uh brown vine kind of tie in our stem up there now i'm not going to add as much water but i am going to drip just a little bit of water in with this brush Anytime I'm doing liner work, I like to um, to thin it out just a little bit. Okay, let's put. All right, I'm going to load it up pretty heavy, and I'm just going to randomly put some vines. Now, let's make one come up here. I'm trying to think, do I want to start? Let's start here. I don't want to get carried away with them. But I do want enough to make a difference. Okay, let me see if I can get that a little, a little better for you. So I'm just randomly putting some, some vines on here. And they don't have to be exact on both sides, but um, you don't want a ton over here and very few over here. So you want it somewhat balanced. Okay, let's go with that. We may do some green vines up here if time allows us. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take my round, a round brush. I may end up switching to a filbert. We'll try both ways. See if I like this one. I'm gonna go with cadmium yellow. Thank you, Linda. Oh, I will message you. <laughs> I will message you, Marie. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. I do. I already have everything written down. Everything's numbered. I have a card on the back of everything um, with the size, what it is, and... Um, and I have a sheet already printed up with slots for my hubby to fill in on, okay, who was the first one to comment? Who does it go to? So Marie, or whoever, uh, while you're on here, to, um, do you have the customers, do you have them email you their information? I didn't figure they would want to put it in the um, comments. Okay, I'm just trying to decide which brush I want to use right now for the petals. Oops, this is not, that's not the one I wanted. I think. What I'm doing is just playing with uh, a couple of brushes to see which one I want to make my petals. Either one will work. I think I'll just go with the, the round. Okay, this yellow should look really pretty, but you know what? Let's do white first. Anytime you're gonna use yellow, it's really good to put a white, a white background to kind of help that yellow pop. Hi, Kimberly. Appreciate y'all being here. Our little baby Jack was seven weeks old, our little grandson, seven weeks old Saturday, and they brought him here. Uh, they came here and brought him to church. He got to be at church with us. They go to church in uh, Louisville. So it's a little bit of a drive for him, not, not a lot. I mean, it's about an hour, about 45 minutes if the traffic's good. Okay, so I am just making some random flowers here and there. And then we'll come back and put some yellow over them. And we'll put a center. And I'm just mashing down, lifting up. Not worrying too much about the center because we're gonna cover it. And they look pretty even white. I worked a little more on uh, the workshop. I'm gonna do the live sale first and get through my little surgery thing. And then plan the workshop. I've been planning it, but announce it uh, when we'll be doing it. 
that will also be a first for me. So trying to step outside of my comfort zone and do more for you guys and in the same same time help me to learn. Also, we've been dealing with um, my husband has an old, old injury from a child in his shoulder. And every now and then it acts up a little bit, but it always goes away if he does something to aggravate it. Well, he was reaching back doing something two weeks ago and heard this big pop in his shoulder and just excruciating pain. And uh, went to the doctor and he said, well, you need an MRI. He hasn't been able to use it for two weeks. I mean, it's just, he just can't use it. And so they ordered the MRI insurance calls back calls and says um we don't think that's necessary and denied it I said how can you not think that's necessary so went to an orthopedic surgeon and they did an x-ray and they said he tore his tendon completely away what they think is completely away from the bone is why he can't use it. <clears throat> it's not attached. So they are fighting with the insurance to tell them that yes, they need an MRI. So he may be having some surgery as well. And I'll fill in with some leaves and um, some other little flowers as well. So we're dealing with that too. <laughs> And if it's a, uh, when it's a torn or ripped tendon, you only have so many weeks that they can reattach it. After six weeks, they can't reattach it. You just have to try to do physical therapy and strengthen uh, what it does, your bicep. His bicep, you know, is up here, but his bicep, since the tendon broke, is down here. Makes him look like he's got a really big muscle, <laughs> but um, he can't use it. So. Anyway, we're waiting to see if they're going to do surgery or physical therapy. We're not sure. I don't think physical therapy is going to do any good. But for insurance purposes, you have to wait and see. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Miss Brenda. Oh, I know this color blue is so pretty. It's uh, spa blue, deco art spa blue. And then we shaded with Laguna blue. So just a really good combination. These are just simple little flowers that we're doing. I'm just laying a um, background of the white first since we're doing yellow. Really wasn't sure what we were going to do. But I want the white to be really dry before we put anything else on it. Because it'll mix in. Okay, that should be dry enough. Okay, so let's go into our yellow. And start over here since we did these first they should be drier okay just bringing them all down to the center
and then we'll put a, a middle in there. Okay, so start out very light and then mash down. If you're going this direction, you mash down and then let up. So it just depends on which direction you're going, where, where you put your pressure. So my hubby, thank goodness it was his left arm, but you don't realize how much you use both arms, even though he's right-handed. He hasn't been able to mow, and it drives him crazy if he can't mow. I used to help him mow, but he bought a zero turn in the uh, a John Deere, and I know I could learn how to use it, but it just throws dirt like crazy in your face. I would be in the hospital. I'm so allergic to grasses and um, dust. So I can't help him anymore with that and we don't still have the um, just regular riding, riding one. It hasn't grown much except, you know, they always say it, uh, the grass is greener over the septic tank. Well, that is so true. Because where our septic line is, it's very green and grown, but everything else has been pretty dry. Okay, we will put a second coat on it. Second coat always goes on faster. I am going to put in the live cell, I'm gonna put one of those um, pumpkin trios with the snowmen on the back snowman on the back and snowballs so I will have one of those and I'm going to put some of my napkin blocks in there I've got several sunflowers the big sunflowers I think there's three, three or four of those that will be in there. Okay, a couple more, then we'll put a second coat on real quick and start adding some the centers. Physical theory from a broken ankle. Ooh. I will have to share. My daughter has this app that makes you look so funny, but she always makes up um, either a song or says something funny about school. Um, and she's already had, this is her first week of back to school. My daughter's a school nurse. Um, she's an RN and um, she's an elementary school nurse. And already they've had two broken bones, um, four stomach virus kids that had to leave, and 
I think she said two bee stings. And I don't know, but she's talking about it in the, the song that she does. And it's hilarious. It makes your eyes look real big and your mouth look real big. But last year, she would do one once, uh, I think once a week she would do one. And um, it was, what does RN, because she's a registered nurse, her badge says RN. What does RN really stand for? And um, one was really, 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 I don't remember what they all were, but they were hilarious. So I'll, I'll ask her if I can post that. <laughs> it was so funny just what she's already had to deal with. On that stem that we stained, um, we could do some shading on it as well. Okay, let's gonna dry just a second. And let's do this. Quick second coat. And we'll get our centers. And I'm just putting a little more yellow. I really don't mind that some of that blue and white is showing through. It's just giving it a little more texture. And the mention. I did have one pumpkin pattern. It was much larger than this, but I put one huge sunflower at the bottom and leaves. Um, that one was, we did that one in a couple of different classes. Paint parties. They really liked it and it, um, it's a pretty fairly easy one to do. Okay, I think they're covered enough. to an angle brush, just a small angle, and we'll put some centers in there. The 
this is a heat heated craft tool. It's not a hair dryer, uh, but it gets really hot. Uh, but it's much much quieter than a hair dryer. And I still use a hair dryer when I'm off camera. Sometimes I use this too, but um, it gets really hot. I got it on Amazon. It was about twenty-eight dollars, I think. But I absolutely love it. Okay, let's get a little bit of black. This is lamp or ebony black deco art. We can pounce the little centers in. I've got my little pouncer brush. Let's let's try that instead of the um, instead of that angle brush. Just pounce some of the, the centers in. So they're not just perfectly round. And it's just a little scruffy um, angle brush. Ruffy just means it's been used a lot and has lost its shape for what it was um, intended for. So I'm just kind of going in a, um, a circle, but just back and forth because I don't want it just a perfect circle. Jesse, thank you ladies so much for hopping on. I know there's a lot going on tonight with um, Heidi Easley's uh, fall ball and Tamara Bennett's uh, pumpkin trio. challenge. So I appreciate you being on here. The one, the video we did last, see what was my live last time? Painting this, the sled. We did the sled. That one has almost 900 views. <laughs> that is incredible for me. So excited. Okay, let's do let's do some leaves. And then we'll add maybe some white. Probably could put a word up, you know, something hello fall. Um, not sure what we'll put up, up there. Let's go ahead while we've got this brown out though, and um do a little bit of shading on that stem. Let's see if we can get it to shade right. Just gonna get it a little wet. I have to go with a little bit darker brown. I, I'm not sure. We'll see here.
Okay, I think that's gonna work. I'm just going into that burnt umber. Okay, see the depth that gives? And we'll go ahead and do that all the way around. Just adds another layer to it. I'm not very good at doing it upside down, but I'm just darkening that just a little to make it look like it's um, the top of it. Look at our stem. See how just that little bitty step changed it so much. All right, let's work in some leaves down here. go with a little bit smaller round. I need to learn how to do leaves like um, Terry Burton and oh I don't know there's several that do the Donna Dewberry one step. Okay that paint was still wet underneath it so let's get a different spot here. I haven't practiced those enough to do that. We'll go in with some brown here on this black as well when that dries a little more. So for now, we're just gonna do the easy, easy peasy leaves. And this is Hauser Medium Green, I believe. Yes, Hauser Medium Green. And we'll just put some little leaves. A couple of coats. And then we'll put some highlights and some shading on them, which will really make a difference. Leanne with uh, You Can Paint Too. She does really pretty flowers and um, leaves. Just kind of doing little football shapes. But we're going to also do some white on here as well. I am at 946 followers. That's 84 new followers this month. 
thank you so, so much for sprinkling out the videos and getting your friends to follow. That has made a huge difference. So when I get to a thousand, for real a thousand <laughs> this time, um, I get to send out some more happy mail. Okay, and I am just randomly adding some leaves just to put in some fillers here. And when we go back and do the second coat over them, um, they'll look even better. I guess we could put a flower right there. I didn't think about that. Go ahead and get base coated for one there. Kind of fill it in there. Let that dry and then we'll come back and put some yellow over it and do it like we did these others. And I'm not making all the leaves the exact same size. Doing some small ones, and then we're doing some larger ones. And then we'll come back with the darker green for shading and some um, lighter green for some highlighting. Still using out of that same little puddle. So far, except for the black, our colors are pretty soft. You can tell how bowed this is, how it's shimmying back and forth or bouncing back and forth. And I'm painting it, but 
I'll fix that. What I'll do is spray it just a little bit with some water after I seal it and put some um, wax paper or parchment paper over it and then set something really heavy on it. It's really relaxing though to paint all these little little leaves. Now, I say it's relaxing. You may be sitting there thinking, how boring. <laughs> how many more leaves is she gonna paint? Okay, let's dry that and put our second, well, I think I can go ahead and just, yeah, let's go and dry it just a little bit, put our second coat. And then I should be able to put some yellow on that flower. I'm going to go ahead and put our yellow on so it'll be drying. So the week of a couple of days before the live sale, I will post the rules. I don't want to say rules, but <laughs> how it's going to go. The instructions. There you go. So if my hubby has surgery, he may be in a sling. And I will for sure have just had that implant put in. Don't know if I'll be on pain medicine or not. So who knows? <laughs> With all the pain medicine we may be on, we may be giving everything away. Y'all be sure and be tuned in. Who knows what's going to happen? We may be paying y'all to take stuff. All right, we'll let that cook dry. All Okay, second coat really makes a difference on it, but you could also leave it transparent with that grain showing through. It also, with um, this leaf, looks okay. But I think I want it covered. much faster with the second coat. Then we'll put just a little bit of shading on them and some highlighting. And you can tell I am not taking a lot of pains with these.
still in that same puddle of paint. I've not put any more paint on the plate. This is the Hauser medium green. There's a Hauser dark green, which is great for shading your leaves and the veins. And the Hauser light green is good for highlighting them. Sometimes I use, um, I don't remember deco art, it may be lime green with them. But there's also an apple green with ceram coat. So where it's wider, I'm really pressing down, and then much less pressure when I get up to the point. Go back over the base of a couple of these. that one up a little bit with the blue. So I had five, let's see, three, four, five, six, Six teacher orders for door hangers, the pencils and the rainbows and, um, that I got done in the last couple of weeks. So I love doing things for our teachers. Got them all covered. We have a little touch up to do here and there. One of the things I'm wanting to show you in the workshop is how to do rosebuds. But I need to practice a little bit myself. It's been a while since I've done them. Okay, now let's go with the um, darker green. All right, I can put some shading on them. Let's use... Let's use plantation pine instead of the dark hauser. Jeremiah. Hi, Teresa and Debbie 
Got a few more hop on here. We're just kind of planning this one as we go. All right, let's put a little more yellow. Second coat on that bigger flower. This is the cadmium yellow deco art. Pretty close to the primary yellow. I've got a white underlay, white base coat under them. Okay, so we're going to go with that dark. I really did not need that much, but, um, and I'm just going to use this tiny little bitty brush. It's a size two Princeton Velvet Touch. Just going to get a little on the tip, just like we do our large ones. And let's start over here. Gonna put on the bottoms of the leaves. We're going just right up to the vine, and I don't know that it will show up on camera for you. I'll try to get it close so you can see the difference. Okay, not sure if you can see that. I've got one, two, three, four with the dark green on it. So we turn it this way on the bottom of them. Just gives it a little depth. Just drop my brush in the trash can. <laughs> Just getting some on that the tip. Just going on the underside and then we'll come back with the um, lighter green. On the top. Shading and highlighting to me just adds a whole nother level to your um, project that you're painting. And I think it really sets you apart from, say, if you're doing a craft show. I think it um, floating, so shading is darker than your base coat and lighter is highlighting, but it's called floating. And I think that just really sets you apart when your pieces are shaded and highlighted versus somebody's that is not. it out just a little bit. Okay, 
and y'all know I'm not a fast painter, so um, I'm doing this faster than normal, than what I normally would, so I will probably have some, I will have touch-ups that I will go back and do. Half of the um, trick is also having the right tools. Like I love for these small things, this, you know, a tiny brush like this. And then once you get your highlights on, that really makes your shading pop. Okay, one more, and then we'll do the highlights. with the let's see what this light does if, the, if I don't like the light we'll go with an apple green So I've switched to the um, Hauser medium, I mean Hauser light green. So we've got our base color and then our shading and then our highlighting. Just gonna go wherever I shaded, I'm just gonna go to the opposite side and put some highlight in there. I'm going to feather it out. I don't want it real, a real sharp edge. I want it just really blended in and feathered out. Okay, let's see if we can hold those up and let you see them. Tell the difference in the ones that have been and the ones that have not. Doesn't show up quite as good on camera for you. But it really does pop here in person. I suggest that you practice on like poster board until you get comfortable with doing the the sh the shading and highlighting. Once you do it, once you get brave enough to start it and do it on one piece. I don't think you'll ever do another piece without it.
Okay, almost done with the leaves. Okay, I just dipped it back into the water a little bit. Brush was getting dry. Are you guys painting fall right now or are you painting Christmas? I've been doing both. In fact, I was doing two projects at a time today. I was working on that, um, the pencil to correct it. And then I was finishing up that Santa mitten. So while what, something was drying on what uh, the pencil, I would be working on the Santa and vice versa. So I got them both done. Okay, I think I have a highlight on everything. All right, let's get our black center in this one. While our black is still wet. And let's put a little bit of brown in there as well. First craft show in September. Oh, yay! Awesome. I love doing craft shows. Linda, you're doing a little bit of both. Hi, Carlene. Thank you, Heather. Hi, Kathy. The base coat color is um, Spa Blue. Deco Art Spa Blue. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of brown on this little scruffy brush and just put a little bit of brown at the bottom of the centers so you may not be able to see that but um, it's showing it really well here I was a coordinator for our local craft show we have here at the high school every year. I started it with band boosters 20-something years ago. And it is still going strong. I coordinated it for 18 years. And had a booth at the same time. And um, still a vendor in it, but I turned the coordinating part over to someone else. It's, I didn't even have kiddos in school anymore. I did it for, I think, eight years. I didn't even have a child in school. All right, let's go with some deep ochre and make some little flower lines. I'm not going to shade um, and highlight each of the petals because there's enough of that blue and the white showing through. Uh, we'll do some little white lines for highlights. 
but um, I like the texture that it's got right now. So I'm going to just water this deep ochre down a little bit. And we'll make some little lines here. Typically, I make a line and then a couple of lines out away from it. These petals are so small that I don't think it needs that. some white highlights on them and I think I want to do some white accent little flowers little dots that looks like flowers some highlights on just some little highlight lines on some of them and then we'll do some little dots using my tiny little liner brush I put a lot of white out because <clears throat> we're going to be doing some little fillers here in just a second. Last one. Okay, so I'm going to take my daughter. Hi, Kendria. If this 
is your first time to be on, let me know. Say hello. I'm going to take my uh, stylus, my daughter. I get them from um, Hobby Lobby, come three to a package, or you can get one that has two different, uh, or I think the ones from Dollar Tree just have one size. But these come in a package of three, so you get six different sizes of the, the balls on the end. So let's do... Let's just randomly do some dots here and then we'll do some stems. So we can do a stem out that way. I call it the dipping dots. They're great for any time you need fillers. And let's see, we'll get this way with that one. You can do them in any colors. Pretty. And we'll do some little stems also. Every little step makes it look so different. Now these dots take much longer to dry than anything else on your piece, so don't rub your arm in them like I always do. And if you take a dryer to them, um, I would let them dry just a little bit before you do that because they'll splatter everywhere. Let's do one up here. All right, let's see what that looks like. We can do a, trying to think what color stem I want on them. I think I want to do one more right here. Maybe one more right here. Okay. Clean that off. Um, now we could have done these in the dark blue. We might even do some in the The dark blue. I haven't decided what I want to do up here. If I want to leave it like this and put words up here, or if I want to um, do some vines coming up here, probably we'll just do some words like you know, "Hello Fall" or something like that. Um, not real sure. Okay, let's get my liner brush. And I think I'm going to do these in the, 
trying to decide if I want a white, just a white stem going with it or a green stem. What do y'all think with the little dots, little dot flowers? I wanna do some little stems going out to them. I can't hold it up completely straight or the, the dots will start dripping. So you think green or brown like the other, like the vine or white. I can do green, brown, or white, or the dark blue, and add some little dark blue dots. So many choices. That would be pretty to do some of the dark blue, um, this Laguna blue, put some little dots in with that, and do the Laguna blue. Okay, I think I made my decision. <laughs> Thank you so much for your input. I do listen, but <laughs> I promise I do. Dark blue, okay. Thank you so much. I love these colors. These are always my go-to colors. I did a little um, Easter chicken with these colors and the flowers on it. That thing on YouTube has 1,700 views. Okay, so we're gonna go down one size. Um, I did the white and the larger one. I'm gonna do the smaller one. And we'll add some. And then we'll do the stem. more like that. It's pretty pretty. I don't think where my stem would be coming from. Now, if you don't have the styluses, you could easily do this with um, a pencil, dull pencil, or the um, wood end of your paintbrush. I do use patterns, tracers sometimes, but a lot of times I just sit down and go for it. Most of the time that works out, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> It's just paint. You can always redo. Okay, now I'm gonna take, um, I think I can just use my small liner. And that same uh, Laguna Blue, we're gonna make some stems.
I like it, I like it. Just kind of tucking the stems in, uh, back behind the leaves. Which side's here? Sorry, I didn't have you off camera over there. Sorry. Okay, let's make sure I didn't miss one. Oh, I did miss one. There's one over here. Turn it up this way so you can see. Isn't it pretty? I like the colors. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that um, spa blue. And touch up a couple of places before I forget. I will probably put a couple of buttons over this if I end up not putting a wire in it. The holes were already cut. Just touching up a little bit where the leaves were a little messy. So I've got some wooden letters got, I think, blessed, I mean, some words that are already um, cut out that I could use, because I am not good at freehanding lettering, hand lettering. I am just, just not. Now you can also do the little veins in the leaves, but I kind of like them just like this. But that's another little step that you can do. Okay, I'm thinking it's looking okay. Okay, 
Let me raise you up a little bit. And I'll hold it up. Hello, hello. <laughs> See if I can get it to stay up here. Okay, let's hold it back this way. So you can see, kind of get the whole feel of it. It's kind of a big one. And then we'll do it with a uh, close up. But look at the difference, just those little white things doing the dots made. Just added a whole, whole nother dimension to it. Thank you. Hi, Jean. Hello, hello. Thank you, Melinda. Thanks everyone so much. I'm thinking at the end of the workshop, when I'm going to be, you know, teaching some things like this. Um, I could even go in here and do a little bit of flight in here, just a little bit of highlighting, um, you know, in here. But let me show you what we did the other night. Is what I want to do for the workshop uh, that I'm planning is show you lots of different things like this that we just did, only a little bit um, more detailed. And then I thought if you wanted to on canvas or whatever you have, but canvas would be easy to get, um, I thought we might do this um, the last night as a workshop, everybody do it together. What do you think about that? I know you've, um, you've got the, the video, you know, that I did, you've got the live that I, I did, but we could do it, you know, step by step. What do you think about that? You could do it on Canvas. I'm trying to do something that I don't want to have to mail you a, a kit or packet or just something that you would have at home and you could do your circles and, you know, I'm gonna give you the instructions and everything for it. but. You guys can do this. I know you can. It looks maybe intimidating, but what would you think about that? Or would you prefer just a big snowman head? Um, I might just give you some choices. I just want you to paint something at the end. I want to paint it with you that uses what we'll be learning in the workshop. The workshop's only going to be $10. So, um, you know, I'm excited about it. A little nervous about it. I've never done anything like that before, but... Um, you know, I've taught a lot of things in person, but y'all know me in technology and computers and stuff, but um, I'll have some help. <laughs> but um, it'll probably be next month or the beginning of October. So I just, I thought doing something Christmas that way, or we could do, um, I've got several things. I don't want to get too detailed to where it takes four hours to, you know, to do it. Um, Oh, I want you to do the workshop. I just think it's going to be so much fun. We'll be in a private Facebook group, uh, so it'll just be us, and um, I'll be giving away some door prizes and some things of that nature. So um, we could even do a Santa face, and you could do the beard. So y'all be thinking and uh, comment in here what you think you would like to paint. I think the snowman would be really easy. You would learn several different techniques in that. Um, I love how we did the snow. Um, I learned that at a, in a class, but um, several different things that I'm going to be showing you. The first two nights will be just showing you techniques, just things that I have learned that um, I know to do that maybe you've already seen me do it, but somebody else hasn't. Um, Snowman and Christmas lights. I kind of think so. Uh, the snowman workshop will just be $10. That's it. $10 plus your supply. You'll have the supplies. Uh, I'm going to just do things that you have around your house. If you already have a piece of wood, you can paint on that. Um, I will probably do it on canvas because I haven't painted on canvas, you know, with y'all uh, in a long time. But canvas would be easy to get. Uh, but anything that you have that you, that you want to paint on. Um, I will, before the workshop, give you the colors that I will be using. You don't have to use the exact colors. Um, you can get, you know, as close to as you can, whatever you have. So maybe that way you don't have to go buy a bunch of paint. Um, so we can, you know, do that. So I'm really working hard on getting that together. I want to get through the live sale first. 
want to get through my surgery and my husband's surgery that he's probably going to have to have um, before we do the actual workshop because I want to be 100% to do that with you. It'll probably be three nights, two nights of techniques and different things, and then that third night, it would probably be a Monday, Tuesday, and then a Thursday uh, because I wouldn't be able to do it on church night. Uh, but I'll get all that worked out, and you'll know in plenty uh Plenty ahead of time, so I can get the payment and all that stuff worked out. Uh, um, got it all. I'll have to get it set up on my website for you to do that. And so, still working out some of those details. But the next thing that's upcoming is the live sale. I will have several of my spring items marked really low, um, half price or lower than what I typically uh, sell my spring things for. I had a few things left over. Um, so we'll do that, and I'll have a few Christmas things in there that won't be marked down. They'll be normal price uh, on those, but anyway, that will be not tomorrow, but the next Friday at 6.30. Uh, we will both probably be on some, <laughs> like I said, some pain medications from the uh, surgical procedures, so who knows what we might be doing. Uh, as I said in the beginning, we may be giving it all away and not even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that won't happen. But anyway, I'm excited about it. Thank y'all so much for hopping on with me. It looks really bare up here right now, but I think um, that I'm going to probably put thankful, blessed, happy fall or something up here on it. So I'm going to have to think about it and leave it, leave it that way a little bit and see. Now tomorrow I will post this. Uh, the steps that I did, I know it's backwards for you. It says Miss, Mrs. Needham, uh, but this pencil, teacher pencil, door hanger, this one, uh, the name was spelled wrong on it because the school spelled her name wrong on everything. So the mother that is purchasing this for the teachers, um, she gave me the spelling wrong because that's how they gave it to her. So and already had these the little pieces already glued on there, so I didn't want to take them all off. So I'll show you how I ended up fixing that. So um, I'll just post some pictures and with some um, directions on what I did. So it was fixed, easy fix. So <laughs> just had to think about it a little bit. Um, so that one has been a really big seller. I love doing those. And um, they haven't gotten them yet. So we did... Um, little bitty apple on that one it says one plus one is two and that was to help the mistake because we had to take a letter out and move some letters over um so anyway when you see that post that's what that's what that is all about okay ladies mark your calendars for not tomorrow but the next friday at 6 30 we will begin the live sale and then uh, after that, I will let you know about the workshop, my first workshop and first live sale. So I'm really excited, nervous. I just want it to be good for you guys. Hi, Sharon. Thank you so much. And I hope you're doing better, Sharon. I know you just got over a back surgery too. How do I hang my door hangers? Pam, the way I hang mine, let me show you. This one that we painted tonight, I purchased from someone else out of a big bundle of stuff I, I bought from her. So she already had uh, holes in this one for wire. I don't typically do the, the wire, so I will probably put a button or something over these. Um, or I may do the wire. I've got some, so I may do that. But here's how I do mine. And this was from somebody else that showed us how to do it on Painter's Clubhouse, Tamara Bennett's Painter's Clubhouse. I used to just staple them directly to the wood and be and try to be very careful that the staple didn't go through. I put some a paper pad under the stapler so it wouldn't go through, but I still had a problem. This light's about to hit me in the head. Still had problems with every now and then it would come through the front and ruin my piece. And I you just cry when that happens. Um, so what I do now, and I've, I've been doing it for a year now, and I've never had a problem since. Um, you can get any shape you want. You can cut little scraps. You can cut little pops. Well, I don't think popsicle sticks would be thick enough. But um, I get hearts because it's Young at Heart Creations. So I get little wooden hearts. Let me show you because it's kind of hard to see with this rope. 
Um, I think they come 50 or 100 to a, a bag. I get them on Amazon. Um, but this is what they look like unfinished. They're just about not quite an inch wide. But, and then I just stain them, just like I showed you that staining technique tonight. I just watered out on some paint and just stain over them and wipe them off. You could also paint them, but they've got circles, hearts, stars, whatever you want. And they're not very expensive at all. Um, but again, you could just take your scrap pieces of wood and, and do it. So what I do is take my CA, or you could use Gorilla Super Glue, any kind of super glue, glue that's not, you know it's not going to come off and glue that to your piece. Glue that, let it dry. I like the CA, I mean the uh, stick fast glue because it dries really fast. I mean, you gotta be real quick, get it where you want it because that's where it's gonna stick. Um, then I staple my jute or hanger, whatever kind of hanger I'm gonna put on it, I staple it to this. That gives you just enough thickness for that revolution ply in the MDF it's not going to go through. You're stapling it to this and it holds wonderfully. So I just glue it on there where I, you know, where I think the, the center is. I get my center first, you know, decide where I want my center, where the center is going to be. And then just glue those, glue those on there, decide where your center is going to be and staple it to it. Now I always tie a knot in the end of my jute or whatever that is and I put the knot down at the bottom of this of the heart or whatever it is, square, whatever you're using. If you put the knot up here, then it really makes your door hanger kind of stick out. So if you put it down here at the bottom underneath it, you don't have any problem with it. So that's how I hang them. Never have had a problem since. Been a year since I've, that I've been doing that and never had any staples come through. They've never come off and it looks nice. It gives it a finished look. So um, that's how I hang all of my door hangers now. And I love it. So I don't know who it was that gave us that idea, but it works. Such an easy fix. And that's it. Okay, ladies. Well, I am going to uh, go eat. Thank you for the prayers. We appreciate it. Um, you know, it's just what happens when you start getting older. <laughs> but we're just going to go with the flow. We're going to go on with the live sale. If for any reason we can't do the live sale, I will let you know plenty ahead of time. But I don't see any problem. I don't foresee any reason that we won't be able to do that. I'll have it all set up beforehand and um, shouldn't have any trouble with that. But thank you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I don't feel like it's finished, that we did a finished project, but I'm just not sure what I'm going to put up here yet. Um, but I think you learned a few techniques on this, and we'll probably do something something like this in the workshop, showing the little dots and things. But there's other things that, um, tips and things like of that nature that I haven't done with you. Um, I'm going to practice on the little rosebud, showing you how to do that. This would, would be cute with some rosebuds on it, too. I've got a big wooden rocking horse that I just stained dark that I think I'm going to put some rosebuds on it. I think it'll be cute like that. So anyway, I will let you know when we get closer to that. I'll be giving you more details on that. But right now, the up and coming thing is the uh, live event sale or live sale, online sale. Not tomorrow, but the next Friday at 630. So if nothing else just come for a good laugh because I'm sure we're going to have some funny moments. So thanks so much. Don't forget to sprinkle, please. I appreciate it. If you'd sprinkle, I'm 946 followers. I'm trying really hard to get to a thousand so I can send some more happy mail out. Good night, ladies. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it so, so much. Good night. Y'all have a fun Friday and a good weekend. Bye-bye.